Uh, well, Ian, it's a game that you'd rather you know, not be playing after the events of Saturday, but how do you view it? Is it a chance to kind of get those ideas out on the pitch more on a nice playing surface um, and kind of see the positives out of the situation? Exactly. Um, like you say, in an ideal world, we, we don't have a replay, um, but it is what it is. We, we didn't win the game, so that's what we have to do now. Um, and, and usually... We would recover, use Monday as a bit of a recovery session and we'd have a pretty intense training session on Tuesday anyway. Um, this is obviously more than that. It's a game, a, a competitive game that's very important. But at the same time, it is an opportunity to play 11 v 11 um, with tough competition and, uh, and challenge ourselves to improve on certain aspects. So we look at it from that perspective that we, we use it to our advantage um, an extra game in there is another game in which we can hopefully develop and learn. You made changes on Saturday. You didn't make wholesale wholesale changes on Saturday. Um, given the fact that you know it's a short time between games, can we expect uh, more changes perhaps for Tuesday's game? Yeah, I would, it, there'll be some players that come back in and, and we rested some and, and we'll probably rest some others now and, and rotate it round and other players are fresh and hungry and ready to go. So... Yeah, we'll we'll definitely rotate a little bit, bearing in mind the the schedule that comes up next week. But at the same time, a lot of players are used to playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, so it's not a big deal either to to have to play tonight and and then be ready also for Saturday. So we'll take stock now with the staff and see which players we think will benefit from freshening up and and which players can come in and add something and and go from there. We know how much Tamworth are going to be up for this, playing at a stadium like Meadow Lane on a pitch like that and all the heritage that goes with, with Notts County. How do you go about managing to you know, temper that and, and control that? Because it's going to be a very you know, tightly contested game and they're going to be right up for it. Yeah, but it, no different to Saturday, to be honest with you. I mean, they obviously had uh, their home advantage in, in that uh, respect at the weekend and, and they utilised that. You know, The crowd were behind them and... And um, they made it very difficult, um, you know, on a on a surface that was unusual for us. So, you know, they that that get whole game, you know, they made extremely challenging, and I thought they gave us real good competition in there. They're, they'll come and do exactly the same. Hopefully, now we take advantage of the home uh, pitch, surface, and environment, and uh, we can capitalise on that. Just just how difficult is it to adapt to those three G four G surfaces? Because you know. I play five-a-side football, I play on them every single week and they can be awkward and, and the ball's bouncing all over the place. Is it, is it something that's quite hard to get the players ready for? Alex, are you blaming your bad first touch on the surface yeah, so now? Basically, that's exactly what I'm blaming. Right, OK, just so I'm getting that right. It's, it's the <laughs> surface and not your touch. Um, exactly. OK, um, listen, you know, obviously I was abroad in, in Scandinavia and I'd say 50% of the top flight there is playing on artificial um, a better artificial, to be honest, than what than what we saw at the weekend. Uh, but nonetheless, it's played on on artificial. For me, uh, lower league clubs, it's total sense to play on that kind of a surface rather than have like a overused, poor grass pitch that's very hard to maintain. You get to allow kids to play on it. Um, economically, it's much better. So, to be honest with you, I think I I, I would think it would be better for youth development and for many things for some of the clubs lower down to, to switch to artificial. The pitch wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It is a change in surface, especially when it's dry. You know, when them surfaces are wet, the ball moves really quick and it's quite quite okay to play on. It was a little bit dry, but at the same time, we're going to go to some places over the Christmas period and then when the pitches dry out that are certainly going to be a challenge. And it's up for us to adapt to the conditions rather than, rather than uh, do what you do, Alex, and blame the pitch. Exactly. Well, <laughs> no, what can I say? Um, because it's interesting, isn't it? Because we saw with Sutton that they uh, had to delay their first home fixtures because they had to get their pitch uh, replaced entirely. But you think that, you know, clubs in League Two and maybe even League One could, you know, that might be beneficial to have an artificial surface, and even at that level, at the EFL level? I know there's a lot of like. Um... Yeah, discussion, certainly in the EFL, of course, they don't allow it. And, and I understand it because a, there is nothing better than a good grass pitch. Like, you know, when you get out onto Meadow Lane and the grass is perfect, there's there's no substitute for that. But I've also seen the state of some of the pitches through the Christmas period and it becomes very challenging. Games are called off and 
the pitches start to cut up and lower down where the finances are tight, long-term economical benefits of having, and I'm not talking about old school AstroTurf, but a top, top class 3G, um, 4G, you know, you do get a good game of football on it if it's well watered and slick surface. So I see the benefits and obviously you get better facilities for the young players and, and for the young academy, more people can use it. it. The stadium becomes a hub of economy. I've seen it, you know, I've been at clubs that have switched from grass to, to artificial for economic purposes. Um, so I've seen seen both sides of it, really. You know, I was upset that they were turfing up my nice grass pitch and replacing it with our AstroTurf, but I, I also understood the, the economy behind it. So yeah, I'm surprised that m maybe more clubs haven't gone down that route for for the kind of club and economy perspective, but for a pure football perspective, you know, a good grass pitch, there's no substitute really. I guess all the problems, you get all the rubber pellets over the kitchen in the living room and everywhere, and that's, that's my issue as well. <laughs> um, if you win the game tomorrow, of course, it's Rochdale away, yeah. um, with the greatest respect to Rochdale, not not the most glamorous, uh, glamorous of ties, but a, a good chance to test yourself against the side who are playing in the EFL at the moment, if you can win tomorrow. Well, that's the way we see it. Obviously, you know, the first port of call is to do our job tomorrow and we really want to do that. So if we do that, then we know that it's a, a football league club. Um, and it doesn't matter to me who we play, but it's it's a good challenge to go and play a team from the league above and it gives us some good reference points on, on where we're at against a, a club in a higher league. So, you know, we, we, we first just focus on, on this game and, and try to get our job done. Then after that, you know, of course, we, we hope that if we do it right, we can look forward to that challenge.